fresh genetic evidence could see the conviction of child killer Kathleen Folding overturned. Folding was jailed 20 years ago for killing her three children, Patrick, Sarah and Laura, as well as the manslaughter of her son, Caleb. Folbig has always maintained her innocence. Well, joining us live now is Kathleen Folbig's solicitor, Rani Rago. Rani, thanks for your time this morning. So, appeals have failed. A 2019 inquiry reinforced Kathleen's guilt. Why should she get another go? So it's widely known that miscarriages of justice take a long time for the system to rectify. So in the case of Lindy Chamberlain, she had a trial, three court appeals, four inquest, a royal commission and a pardon. So that it, it's known that it takes a long time. But in the case of um, Miss Folbig, she has fresh genetic evidence and no court or inquiry has looked at this yet. So there needs to be mechanisms in place for the legal system to evaluate new evidence that comes to light after a legal process. And we're very confident this new inquiry will examine properly and comprehensively this overwhelming new evidence. Okay. So in your view, it's not undermining the justice system? Not at all. We have a fantastic judiciary in this state, um, but it is a human institution, Peter, and sometimes we get it wrong. The trial focused, as the prosecution said, um, the strongest bit of evidence against Miss Folby was her diary entries. They never had any evidence of smothering from any pathologist. It was always natural causes. So recently, six unpaid experts have demystified the myths that were pro proposed by the prosecution that these were confessions of murder. So in no way does this undermine the judicial system. It actually strengthens it. it it shows that New South Wales has the confidence and the mechanisms in place to deal with miscarriages of justice. So what would this new inquiry involve? What, what precisely is it going to bring up that hasn't been brought up before? The Attorney General Mark Speakman's um, comments yesterday indicate that he has serious doubts about Ms Folbig's convictions based on this new evidence. So he and the Governor have indicated that that bit of evidence, the new genetic evidence, will yeah. form um, a really big part, but the exact scope of the inquiry is yet to be determined. If she is freed, and, and there is a big if here, but, but if she is freed, having, bearing in mind that she's served most of her sentence already, what happens then? Do you seek damages? That would be a question that we will discuss with Ms Folbig um, and the rest of her legal team, but um, we will be expecting that the system will acknowledge the harm that's been caused to Kathleen Folbig, remembering that she was prosecuted in the, in the absence of any evidence of smothering. She has been labelled Australia's worst female serial killer. She has been locked away in maximum security prisons for 19 years, all while losing her babies through no fault of her own, which science has now proven. So. It is a horrendous miscarriage of justice and one in which the suffering is unimaginable. Have you spoken to her since yesterday? I have been unable to speak to um, Kathleen Folby because I found out the news about this inquiry when I was watching Mr Speakman live. Um, I then checked my emails and I realised he email emailed me one minute before his announcement. So I have been unable to speak to my client, but I will be speaking to her this morning and discussing where to from here. I guess um, a lot of people might question you know, if there is a child that died from natural causes or whether it, there is a genetic mutation here, perhaps it could apply to one, but the fact that it applies to more than one over a period of time, that, that might be hard for people to compute. What, what do you say about that? Look, I, I think that the main reason Kathleen Folby was convicted was the assumption that four children can't die in one family. And I know that people, even I speak to people all the time, they said, yeah, but Rani, how can four kids die in one family? Yeah. And that's because none of us hear about these cases often. But science and medicine hear about it all the time, and it's quite common in genetics. And because we didn't have the technology in 2003 to sequence the genome and find these mutations, um, we never heard of it. But an international register has recorded 150 child deaths and mutations of this kind. So it is widely known in science and medicine. Um, but I think people need to perhaps put aside their um, suspicion um, and assumptions about natural deaths in a family and really look at the evidence because that's what the legal system should be concerned mm. with, evidence, not assumptions. Okay, interesting. All right, Rani, appreciate your time in explaining that for us this morning. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon.